Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the Majefries Network here on OpenTCD. Got a busy episode for you today. Before we get fully started, let me tell you what I've been doing off camera between last episode and this one. First and foremost, loads of freight trains. Uh, I've brought an absolute ton of freight trains back onto the network, which I'm really, really happy with. And they all seem to be working too, which is very nice to see. Uh, I just want to check that I've got that right. Yes, good. Um, so this is a coal train that we're looking at at the moment. And it currently runs between, and I've put um, Bedtown, I think it was, on the, uh, the list. But I don't think that's right. Benpool, that's what it's called. Let me change that on the schedule. Because that's going to drive people mental otherwise. There we go. So if you go on the um, service schedules list now, you'll see that there is a passenger one and there is a freight one. Um, the freight one is currently full up of um, services that all fall under the name of M4J Freightline. As you can see, it's very creatively named. Um, whoops. The reason I did that was just because I was, I was making up a name on the fly, essentially. Let me just check all this as well. Good, right. Let me close some of these windows. Make sure that these are... These should be empty at the moment. And it looks like they are, which is good. Okay. And then I'll talk you through what we've done. In fact, before I do that, let's scooch over to Guard City North, which is very busy now. There are lots of trains sat here now, which is really good to see. Um, it's getting a little bit clogged, which could be a problem because I do plan on running more trains into GNFT after today's episode. If I pause the video really quickly. Okay, so what have I done that's different? Well, down here, I've put two additional platforms. I will extend it to three and have an extra line cut across here and in. Um, this has been set up like this. So this is storage here, Hunway Sidings. So this is where trains are stored if they come from the depot here. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But these two platforms here are for trains that don't fall under any of these categories. And what I mean by that is, if anyone's played Railroad Tycoon, um, particularly Railroad Tycoon 3, or you've watched some playthroughs of Railroad Tycoon 3, and Rail Railway Empire, I think it's called, or Railroad Empire, uh, the game that's just been released, um, you'll see that the fastest and most efficient way to transport goods and passengers and mail is to have trains that just go between two stations so that it's like a hopper service and that's basically what I've done with this freight network so for example this train um, carries a mixture of goods um, manufacturing supplies anything that can be carried on a flatbed essentially I think it will carry metal in the future as well it carries them between Sindwood Industrial Park and Guard City North Freight Terminal. And if I show you here, it's set up to refit to whatever is available. And I think I was talking about that in the last episode. And if I show you the uh, terminal itself, you see there's lots of scrap metal and there's lots of chemicals, all of which are transported, uh, I think all of which are transported to, yeah, Sindwood Industrial Park. And then it shows you how they get there, which is nice. I like that. Um, so we have different types of train carrying different types of um, freight. So if you go on the service schedule, you see instead of uh, passenger or service type, so I used to have like stopping, express, semi-fast, that kind of thing. It now says cargo type, and I've got a list of all different types of cargo. So manufacturing supplies is the top one, which is the one that we set up in the last episode. Um, I should also say before we go any further with that, um, I'm going to change the way that that train works. So it won't be carrying manufacturing supplies anymore, it will be carrying food, it will come under a different franchise name, um, and essentially the idea behind that is we're going to carry food around the map as fast as possible. So we won't be using the um, class 325s like we used to, or nor will we be using um, loco haul trains. We're going to be using those cargo EMUs, at least on the overhead electrification. We're going to be using those cargo EMUs and we're going to be running them fast. We want to get food as round, around the map as quick as possible because it's perishable. You want it to get to where it needs to be as fast as possible. 
um, the recyclables service that we had, which is the one that runs between Monningpool Falls, Plindham and Sunnington. That's up and working again. I won't dwell on that. But then underneath it, we got mixed uh, bulk goods, mixed minerals, and then we've also got coal and engineering supplies. Um, so what do I mean by mixed and bulk goods? Well, let me find a good example. Um, we have several different services running between GNFT and Monningpool Falls and also between Monningpool Falls and GSFT, which couldn't find it then for a second, is over here. And there's nothing here at the moment. It does accept engineering supplies, which is nice. Um, and I am going to possibly build an airport somewhere around here, particularly for freight carrying aircraft. It'll probably be on the southern side here, or it could be on the northern side up here. And then we'll have a dockyard that runs across the front here as well. Um, there is a service that runs from here. I don't know where the trains are right now. Okay, you're over there. They're not carrying anything because nothing's accepted here at the moment. But that will change in the future. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the paths. The paths, the paths, the paths. Very important. <clears throat> so out of GNFT, there are two trains that run between... Or two types of train now that run between here and Monningpool Falls. One goes via uh, the freight loop here, the west side. Uh, sorry if you're feeling dizzy with me panning the map, by the way. I can only use the arrow key still because this doesn't work. Really annoying. Uh, in fact, here's a train coming in from Monningpool Falls. You can see it's carrying chemicals. It's also carrying food, uh, fish, all that sort of thing. The slow trains will end up carrying food, I can imagine, because they've got a higher capacity than the cargo EMUs. But the idea is really to try and get the food onto those EMUs. But anyway, um, it runs all the way down this way. And then when it gets to Wooworth, and in particular Gronville, it then comes through here. And then along this two-track cross-country west line, up as far as here, where it then diverges, it goes through... Um, Great Dradingston, and in fact you can see one of the trains arriving back at Monningpool Falls here, carrying recyclables and nothing in the tanks, which is fine. Um, it then runs through Monningpool Falls and into the freight terminal. So that's one route. The next route is from here, Monningpool Falls, which has got a lot of stuff here now, by the way. Coal, food, fish, scrap metal and chemicals. So there's a lot of stuff being carried from here, and there will be even more. By the end of today's episode. Don't you worry about that. Anyway, service starts here. Well, technically it starts at GNFT, but I'll show you what it does from here. Um, it will run out this way, through Monningpool Falls, up through Great Dradingston again. And instead of turning south, it turns north. And it goes up through here, through um, Pleffing Hill Canal Street. And then it follows the cross-country west line all the way along here until we get up here which is Honley Market. The train then diverges this way, comes down here and then instead of going up this hill here and joining up as if it's running to Sunnington it continues along what was the old route towards Sunnington and then actually loops around and connects in this direction and then follows the west wind line all the way down and then uh, into GNFT. Now that did present a problem because these are big hills so what I had to do is build an additional track on the downside here um, for freight trains to use and I had to use slightly more powerful locomotives but I'm pleased to announce that it's worked and it's worked quite nicely so that's good we've got that working the next one we had was between Morningpool Falls and Guard City South freight terminal and the way I did that one was I had the train run down the coast route here uh, which I still need to give the name to, by the way. I have read your suggestions. I just haven't applied the name yet. Um, through Preyborn and then up this way, through Plindham Junction, I built a couple of new crossovers here so the train can go right the way across into the slow line. And then it follows the Great Western line all the way down through here, all the way down this way, down to um, Munfingford. And then, I got confused then, I thought those trains separated, it hasn't. Uh, through Mumfingford, and then it follows this line here, back north, towards Buntbourne, and then goes through Buntbourne, follows 
this line, and I need to remind myself what the, all these lines are called, I will look at the list, and then it diverges and goes into Guard City South. And that is a service that carries coal and well, any kind of minerals at the moment. Um, and then eventually I'm going to put a service between Guard City North and Guard City South. I've also built a new branch of the freight loop which diverges just north of Dinpool East here. And it follows this all the way around here, all the way around here. It's double track all the way. Um, through all of this, through some tunnels which is quite interesting trying to get all those in. You can see there's another set of tunnels here, another set of tunnels here and then eventually it joins up with the um, existing freight loop here just after Brendington um, and just before Rindingwell. So that's quite nice. It's good that we've got that working. So what are we doing today? Well, the reason I've shown you all this is because we're going to expand on it today. It's all rele relevant. Um, and we are going to be putting in the livestock services again on the west wind line. So up here, uh, not there, up here by Flayham, we've got uh, Profing Bridge Dairy Farm. You can see I've already rebuilt the station. It used to be four platforms, now it's two. Um, I was trying to think how I did that, but yeah, there used to be a, an extra bit here. This station is pretty much set up exactly how I want it to be for this to work. That being said, um, I am going to have to put a diverging connection in here, which is basically going to be that and that, except I might do it a tile further back so that I can put a signal in there and then get rid of that one. Also get rid of that one, move this waypoint back one, which I'm not sure if we still need, actually, to be honest. We'll do that. And that's that done. Okay, so these freight trains are going to be diesel hauled. I know I said in the past about having steam doing freight, and we might still do in certain areas of the map, but I think here we're at, we're at an advanced stage around Guard City now. So um, we should have advanced trains not like absolute futuristic but certainly um, more advanced than I'm typing as I'm talking which is never a good idea um, certainly more advanced than we've currently got right uh, what's this place called again Prafing Bridge Dairy Farm I'm just putting this on the service thing now so I don't forget. Uh, Morning Pool Falls. That's not right. Guard City North Freight Terminal. Okie dokie. Right. And then this train is going to carry livestock and milk. So in the past we just had uh, one carrying livestock and one carrying milk. Not anymore. Now we're going to have one that carries livestock and milk, and it's also going to carry something a little extra on the back, uh, which I will show you momentarily. So we want to go, whoops, power. Most powerful ones at the top, and we want to find the first single diesel locomotive, which tends to be this one. Uh, although I might use this one for this, just so it looks different. We'll do a double header. I think we always have to do double header, otherwise it won't go anywhere. That looks interesting. Interesting colour scheme. Blends quite nicely as well. Okie dokie. That looks like a wagon. That's really weird. Don't think I like that. Um, we want livestock and maximum speed. So these are probably going to work. In fact, no, livestock. We want like livestock carrying, because that's a tanker. So yeah, it carries livestock, but it doesn't look like it would carry livestock. A box car, maybe? Which also carries milk. Hmm. I 
I was going to do fixed formations for this, but I might go with the flexible one after all. No, I'm, I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to do fixed. Uh, so we want milk at the front, which will be carried in. Let's carry it in one of these. We don't need it to be auto refitable, so we can carry it in anything really. Like this would work just fine. Um, and that's three tiles worth, like that. I think for this as well, we are going to have to um, just get another locomotive. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. I'm very good at stifling sneezes. Hopefully you didn't hear that. Uh, let's just grab one of these thingies. Right, so we got milk at the front. So we're going to refit you to carry milk. Done. That should all be set up now to carry milk. We're then going to grab uh, some livestock carrying things. Maybe these box cars. I'm sure we used to have more uh, livestock stuff available. That's quite handy actually. I'm going to come back to that sliding door van in just a second. Um, stock car. Now you only go 20 miles an hour. Last point, maximum speed. There we go. So we've got the Echo. So that's a locomotive. You need to use the Echo wagons to extend, which is down here. I don't know what that e actually is. <laughs> You'll have to, um, to bear with me a little bit. Uh, you'll also have to bear with me a minute whilst I remember how to count. Four and six. That should be correct. I'm doing a million things at once at the moment in this episode. Like I said, bear with me. Right. Uh, so I think we're going to go with the box cars to carry the livestock. And that's also going to be three tiles. And we'll get here, uh, livestock, like that. We're then going to move all of these up to there. And then right at the back, um, farm supplies. So we're going to get a little something. Maybe this container rack. Maybe... Yeah, I think that'll work best, actually. Like that. And you are going to carry farm supplies. And then we are going to have to shift this around a little bit. Because I'm going to stick that at the front. Which then means we only need... What does this produce more of? Hmm... Not, not helpful information there. Maybe we don't have that then. Want something that can just carry farm supplies quickly. Like that. Farm supplies. And then you go there. Right, and then we'll do a quick rebuild of this station. Yeah, we are going to have to do a quick rebuild. Um, I can get rid of you now, which is nice. I can get rid of that window as well. And that means I can extend this out, and we should be able to build this properly. Right, um, I need the milk one. No, I need the cattle one first, which is that. Two by three. And you move down one. So you move down two. Yeah, you move to there. And then I get the water pumping one, which goes there. That should still be three. That's two. Am I doing this right? Hang on. Let me go from the front backwards. So you are locomotive and farm supplies. Bam. And then here we go two by three 
for milk. And then here we go uh, livestock. And then I can cut that one off at the end and just have it as a fixture, let's say. Like this. And then I don't have to move any of this stuff because it should all still fit where it needs to be. Awesome, right, let's do this. So we're going to start off by going into... I'm going to resize that first and foremost. Also, we're just going to quickly double check. Farm supplies, milk, livestock. Good. So you're going to go here. You're then going to go right the way up and around. Why are you here? Oh, I think I know why. I think I know why. We'll have to fix that. Um, we'll have to fix that quite quickly, actually. Oh, this is annoying. What happened was I did some reconfiguring of some of the signals and lines at um, Guard City North. So, one of the trains that I had go through, I've now had to re-path and everything. It's a bit messy. Uh, the easiest way of fixing that, of course, is to do this. Like that. Okay. Um, now that waypoint, I don't think we need any more. We can snap that out of place. There we go. So we're going to go here to the farm. And then we're going to follow the line along here, down here, and then here, you're going to hit top speed. Now this is probably going to be the shortest freight route we've ever done when you look at it. Uh, are you supposed to be? Yeah, you're supposed to be going that way and you're not. So you should be going back where you need to be. It's because they're only going 20 miles an hour, that's why. I had the game running for an hour or so, but they take forever. As you can see, at 20 miles an hour. And it's making all the passenger trains queue up, which is nice. It's exactly what I didn't want to see. But yeah, right, you're going to go into here and then along there, along here, and then into the freight terminal. There. Um, you're then going to go around here. And then you're going to go via east avoiding 1 and 2. Via the loop. Via here. Into here. Good. Where you're going to unload the, f the, um, the milk and the livestock. So I'm going to rebuild this to match what we've got over at the other site. I should do that now before I forget. Otherwise, that'll be a bit of a disaster. So you're pumping to uh, three by three. So there's gap, and then it's three by three. All right, hang on. <laughs> Let me get this right. Yeah, there's a gap, and then it's three by three. So it's that. And then it's the livestock ones behind it like that. In fact, that goes there. Then it's this one, which goes there. And then there's um, like that. So I suppose what we could have here is just some general cargo there. And probably there as well, actually. Alright, anyway, you come out of the north terminal, you go via this waypoint here, you go out onto the main line here and via this waypoint here, which, yep, that should be fine, and then you come all the way along here again, through the tunnel here to this waypoint here, and then up and over that bridge. You then hit this waypoint here, you then follow the loop round into there, and then round into the depot. You are service, you are unload, no loading. And you are no loading, no unloading. Except I did that the wrong way around. No unloading, no loading. Right, good. Uh, now, normally at this point, I would say this one will be refit to whatever's available, but I don't need to do that because we've got fixed um, fixed cargo for these trains. 
So that's going to be 3,500. This one here is going to be 1,000. Uh, this one here is going to be 1,000. And this one here is going to be 1,000. And this one here is going to be 500. Now this is nowhere near long enough to be realistic. But it's long enough so that the train stops, it unloads, it reloads, whatever. And it has time to do that. Which is why I've done it like this. Um, 30 miles an hour here. And 30... Ooh, keep misclicking. I don't know. What it, whenever I sit and record, the stool that I sit on seems to get further and further away from my desk. Which is not very good. Uh, that needs to be 75. I thought that was a bit weird. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I like stretching to reach my desk at the moment. Just a bit of a pain. If you suddenly hear me fall off, that's why. Right. Go through the avoiding lines. Now the avoiding lines are becoming congested a little bit, particularly the centre one, which is why I'm avoiding using the centre one at the moment, um, because there are a lot of trains that use it. But it's cool. I like it. I like sitting and just watching all of the freight trains arriving and leaving. It's a lot of fun. Right, uh, that is 45. That one is 30, and then here it's 20, because it's quite a tight curve, into the depot, and then here it's 20, because it's coming out of the depot. Autofill. Right, that's step one complete. Step two um, involves doing something a little weird. Um, Let me have a think, because over here at, no it's not there, it's way, way away, in fact it is a long way away, we might have to build another freight terminal over here to handle all this stuff. For now though, I'm just going to have a service that runs through. So here we've got the stockyard, so we're going to have livestock that's picked up at North Terminal, and it's going to be brought all the way down to here to be delivered. And then we're going to have food on the same service taken back to North Terminal. And then from there it can be put onto other trains and taken off around the rest of the uh, the network. So the idea is to have trains that are profitable in both directions. Because in the past we had trains that only took goods in one direction. So particularly like the coal trains, they only took coal from the mine to uh, the steel works let's say whereas now we've got the the coal trains that take it to the terminal and then from the terminal they pick up engineering supplies and they take them back to uh, the mines which will eventually make us money once we start making engineering supplies because we don't do that right now same principle here so the trains gonna come in for how long is this that's only six you need to be uh, do you need to be no I don't think you need to be longer than six actually I think six is fine and we can also simplify these platforms somewhat. I think. Or should we? Do you know what? I mean, this needs a rebuild. All of this needs a rebuild. So we might as well do it now. Um, let me think. If I get rid of this and this. Um, might have to. Oh, this is gonna look horrible. Ugh. At least revenue earning trains won't be um, crossing these bridges. Because that is an awful way to do it. But I think that is how we're gonna have to do it. In fact, no. That's, that wouldn't work, would it? Scrap. Scrap. Okay, here's my dilemma. We need trains... Let's do that. And we'll connect that like that. Right, yeah. Here's the dilemma. So trains are going to come in here. 
They're going to come round and they're going to come into one of these stations. Now, are they going to stay there and be refitted? So from livestock, are they going to be refitted to food? Or are they going to do another loop to go into another set of platforms? I think they should stay where they are. So really, um, these can all be gotten rid of. Now, we're going to be bringing in livestock from lots of different directions, which is why um, I'm going to keep three platforms here. But that being said, I'm going to get rid of that line because we don't need it. I'm going to get rid of that line. Now, as these these trains are only going to be six tiles long, they could probably be hauled by a single locomotive, and that means we can have um, extra wagon space. I think that would would work out best. I'm going to have to check that again though. So I think that is substantial enough and then here we can get rid of that and that and that. So train comes down here into... why has that got two tracks? Oh yeah yeah I know why it's a passing loop. So we'll put that there as well. So train comes in here and then don't need that train comes in here through the passing loop under the bridge here and then goes round into here unloads livestock loads up um, food and then takes it back towards guard city now I'm also going to put uh, actually no I'm not I was about to say I'm going to put a through line in, but I really don't need to. I also don't need those. So this is formerly a livestock platform. I'm going to change it to be food. Um, so we've got three by three. So if the loco takes up the first tile, then that and that is fine. Which means all that can be taken back which means that this line can be simplified a little bit more like so that, that and that which means this signal can be moved to there and then we can put some um, stuff where are we? raw materials we can put some cattle sheds in there and say that's where they go to be um, you know, done. It's a stockyard after all. Um, and that should be fine. I say I was going to put a passing loop in because, oh hang on. Uh, I was going to put a passing loop in because I was going to make the, the livestock train start here first. But I really don't think that's smart. I think the smart thing to do would be to go back to Guard City North and have the train start there. The only concern I have with that is if we keep starting trains from here um, we're going to end up running out of space here. Now what I've done over on the east side here, you can see it here actually, I've built this little area here. So the trains that run from Guard City South to Monningpool Falls, the depot is actually at Guard City North and they then run down the freight loop all the way down here to um, Guard City South and this is used as train storage so empty trains come here they wait for the three and a half thousand ticks and then they go off and that's their like buffer area there is also an opportunity here to link these two lines up um, so that the trains don't necessarily have to go through that tunnel more on that in a future episode I would say um, so yeah what I might do is on the, the west side and I still haven't connected this up properly. I keep meaning to and never do. Uh, on the west side, I was going to build another depot site, but I don't think I have the room unless I build it down in the south. But even then, I don't think I have the room. So I might have to build it on the east side after all. So we have the train storage here. That means I could put like a depot in. Um... Let's have a look if 
I do... Yeah, because the way I've signalled this, I've not done a very good job of signalling it. Well, I have, but um, it's not really... I suppose what I could do is this and this. And then we can have a loop. So if I build this out like that, um, and then we could have like a depot. This could be really awful to look at. If I do this. Actually, if I just build the loop, yeah, if I just build the loop, then I don't need to worry about all of the other stuff. Which would make life a lot easier. Let's do that. Right. I need to demolish a lot of stuff. So people are probably going to be very upset about that again. I can only apologise, guys. In all honesty. I can only apologise. Right. So we're going to do this. And then... Um, in fact, can I do... No. That wouldn't work. That doesn't really work either. But I can make it work. Uh, I suppose we could have just have a bridge that hops up and over. Like so. And then connect you up like so. And then here, um, if I do this, and this, and that, and then where is eight tiles away? In fact, it is smack bang there. You and you. So you are... Guard City Freight Ring Loop Entry Exit And then if I build one on the north side as well uh, That waypoint can double for that one too Okay Now this might seem really elongated and unnecessary But if it means we can get trains in and out of the depot here Or the depots here Without messing up um, the, the system that we've already got going then I'd say it's well worth doing. So now I want to look at power or cargo types. We want the first diesel locomotive that's high on the power list. Now I know there's the, the argument about what do you want? Do you want power or do you want tractive effort? In all honesty, um, from my research looking into it, I think either is actually quite good. Tractive effort is how much force can the train exert to move, essentially. So, um, trying to think of a really good example. Let's say a train weighs 200 tons, which is 200,000 kilograms. Um, and that then means it weighs, I've not picked a very good number. Let's assume gravity is 9.8. Uh, let's get a calculator. It's been a long time since I did these kinds of calculations. So was it 200,000 I said. Times, might as well do 9.81 if I've got my calculator. So 1.96 um, times 10 to the 6 newtons. That's how much it weighs, which is... Uh, well, 1.96 mega newtons. Well, that means the train weighs that amount to get it. Oh, hang on, <laughs> I, I looked it up. Let me look it up again. Uh, open TTD. So I was about to say that that's how much you would need to get the train moving. I suppose that is how much you would need to get the train moving. So yeah, tractive effort is the force needed to simply move the train to move one ton on level track. Uh, you will need a force of 35 newtons. Um, and that's if mu equals 0.35. For slopes, you will need an additional 100 newtons per percent of steepness. Power is the force needed to run the train at a certain speed. To get the power required to move a train at a certain speed, multiply the tractive effort to move the train with the speed in meters per second. So P power equals F force times V velocity. This all makes sense to me. 
this is just about the the limitations of what I can remember from three years ago. Um, and if you have a multi-headed train, then um, it's simply added together. So it's uh, parallel, parallel, series, series rather than parallel. That's the one I'm looking for. I think I'm probably getting this horribly wrong. Um, but yeah. So this is here. Let's assume you have an 800 ton train which needs to reach a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. You calculate the tractive effort by doing 800 times 35, uh, which equals 28,000. Again, I'm trying to remember where the 35 comes from. I think that's just a number that's built into the game. So that's uh, 28,000 newtons or 28 kilonewtons, and then to get the power, you times that by 60 kilometers per hour. So it's 28 times. Uh, well, six. I'm reading it off the screen. I'm not going to lie. I'm reading it off the screen. 16 kilometers per hour is 16.66 recurring meters per second. Um, so 28,000 times 16.66 is 466,000 watts or 466 kilowatts. And that is the power you need to move the train. Now, this locomotive here, the power hall, it has a max tractive effort of 398 kilonewtons, so 398,000 newtons. And it has a power ratio, and uh, not power ratio, that's totally, that's baloney. Power of 3,741 horsepower. To convert horsepower to watts, um, I'm going to use a simple calculation called Google. And 3,741 is 2.78 or 2.79 million watts so 2.2.8 megawatts which is a lot so let's say uh, this train let me build the train buy the train build the train write the theme tune sing the theme tune all that stuff uh, I want max speed but let's do livestock first and then I want to do it by buy max speed and then we should have the sliding door van is it refitable? That's a big question. If it's not, then Odell. Ah, it's not. Why could it just be? I think that's the only one that holds livestock and food as well, so that's really annoying. I know this one does as well. But I bet this doesn't go very fast. Yeah, 60 miles an hour. That is slow. Slow, slow, slow. Although this holds food and it holds livestock. But it's also not refitable. Okay, what about the box car? Also not refitable. That's really annoying. That's actually really annoying. So this, uh, which one was it? This one. No, that's not refitable either. One of these must be. We must have a vehicle that is refitable. That's just the eco wagon again. Or the echo. Echo wagon, not eco. That is really annoying. That just throws a spanner right in the works. Why couldn't there be a. a, a I'm getting very worked up about it. It's so simple to have something that can hold a cow one minute and then you take the cow out and you stick um, food in instead and then you just bring it back. Okay, we might have to do a refit at a depot. But if we make this six tiles long, like so, you're not auto-refitable, which is so annoying. If I make you go here... Can I refit? <sighs> ah, refit. Okay, so we can do it. It is possible. So over here at um, Henning Hall, we will have to do a bit of rejigging with the track here again. Which is fine. We can do it. I'm actually kind of glad that I left the space to do it. But it is possible. If I remove the petrol station. I don't know why it was built there. 
of all the places to put it game you chose the weirdest and then that goes there that goes there and there and that goes there and then we can use this for additional train store yeah that that works that works all right back over here so you come out the depot you go here and then you go here um, at this point I'm gonna refit you to hold livestock and hold a lot of it you shall um, and then over here you go via Runfingwell waypoint and then you go straight across here through this bit here and then you go um, here then you go around the loop which is good that we've got um, that there so we can actually put the loop like this out the other side and I know this seems so pointless but I promise you it has a purpose having that loop there and then you go via here I'm just realizing like that crosses underneath to just then connect up with it so I'll con reconfigure that and actually yeah, simplify it somewhat um, now what am I doing here let me just check what's this Oh yeah, this is when I was um, trying to get this to work. Alright. Is it the central one we need to be in? It's not. It's the outside one. Okie dokie. So you come in. Uh, if we make you go around the loop you're probably going to go around the outside, aren't you? So we'll just come down the outside. There. 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 Into here. Like that. And then you come out. Uh, this way. Again. And then you come along. Through all of this. to here and then up this way to here and then through the station which I think I have it set up uh, or do I yeah, train can't carry cargo passengers. Yeah, that's fine. So then here you run straight through onto the slow. And then it should just be a case of follow this all the way along to over here to this station where you then divert off and you go up to here where you then drop your speed along here into here to here then to here then to here then to here again really elongated really just to make this work um, and then back out onto the main line via this station and then all the way back to Renston And then through to here and then you diverge off onto the freight ring and then you keep going straight all the way along here Actually, is there another waypoint or something I'd set up eh, maybe it just knows to go this way it's because it avoids the stations I'm sure this there's it must have worked in the past, otherwise I wouldn't have um, kept it the way it was. So it must have worked. Right. You then go via here. Um and then at this point you go uh here. Actually, do you know what? I'm gonna go via the center for this. Because it makes life so much easier. If you just go there, there, and then 
to that depot there. Your service. Uh, actually, you need to refit as well. Back to livestock. Like so. Um, you are unload no loading you are non-stop via as are you so I forgot to do that with some of them in the past and it gets very frustrating um, you're fine you are unload no loading and then you are refit to food okay and then you are no loading, no, or no loading, no unloading. Um, I forgot to do something very important over here. So you don't come. Do you go round the loop first and then stop, or do you stop and then go round the loop? I think you should go round the loop first and then stop. So when you come out here you actually go to here and you are no loading no unloading I know I'm doing it the wrong way around to what I'm saying I'm not going to keep changing my the way I'm saying it because I, I say it that way for reasons right speed limits uh, let me work out how many trains we're going to need as well my, my gut instinct is telling me probably nine M4 J Freight line D hold uh, mixed live stock and food um, guard city north whoops freight terminal and then Denhatton Stockyard. And should I put that in twice? I don't think I need to. Because I can just do the um, the times two calculation and that will give me the, uh, the answer. So, I think nine trains should be enough. The way this formula works, it either gives me nine or 5.5 .5, depending on uh, whether I make it times it by two or not. Which doesn't sound right when you say it out loud like that, but I can assure you it is right. Um, I just don't want to explain it right now. Right. 45. Uh, 20 round the loop. fact it should also be oh yeah no, no, that's fine and then it's 20 out of here as well you then put the right order in to go via that there we go so that one is 20 um, this one here is to 3500 you are 45. Um, you are 45. You are 30. Doing the actual speed limits for this is quite easy. It tends to be 35, 45. Uh, 30, 45. Hang on. 20, 30, 45, or 75. They're the, the speed limits that we've got set up for this. As I say, it works quite well. It works quite smoothly as well. Trains tend to um, to bunch up together quite nicely when you run it like that. A thousand. Uh, and then it's 30. No, it's 20. No, it's 30. I'm forgetting where we are. And then it's 45. And then it's 45. And then it's 45. And then it's 75. And then it's 30. And then it's 30. In fact, it's 45 here, sorry, not 30, 45. 
then it's 30, and then you get to the stockyard here, it's a thousand, and then it's 20. Um, that should be set up to convert. Yep, refit to food, good. I get paranoid when it, I don't see it there. Uh, we'll have that as 500, that should be how long it takes. And then it's 20 here. You are 3,500. You are also 20, because why not? Actually, no, 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 we'll have 30, that's fine. You are then 1,000. Uh, you are 30. And then this is 75. We're nearly there. You are 45. 45. 45. Um, 45. They're, they're actual directional waypoints rather than speed limit ones. 30. 30. 20 and 20 and you are 1000 and you are 500 now I'm hoping while it's in the depots being refitted it does also service the train because that would make life a lot nicer I'm also going to change the formula that I've got here bit there we go that should give us a slightly high number 11 that sounds about right two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven now the only thing I am worried about is do I have enough power to pull this train because it weighs a lot so let me work this out again So it weighs 1.72. Uh, hang on, one, seven, one, seven, two, four, zero, zero, zero. You divide that by a thousand, and you get it in tons. Okay, and then you times that by 35 to get 60,000 um, Newtons. I'm happy with that. And then to get the power, you times that by its speed, which is, oh, hang on. Oh man, this is going to be really annoying. Um, I'm going to have to get some conversion things up. Miles per hour to meters per second. That's actually perfect. So 75 miles per hour, which is the top speed of the train, in meters per second is 33.5 rounded to the nearest decimal place. So I'm going to times that by 33.5 which gives me 2.02 million and that's it in kilowatts so to get that in in that's a really big number oh it's cause, yeah okay no, no that is in that's just in watts so two megawatts essentially and if I go back to my horsepower thing um, the mechanical horsepower of this train is the equivalent to 2.7 million watts megawatts so I th should have enough power to pull the train. Should have enough power to pull the train. We will find out at some point in the future. Um, so that's all that done. Now believe it or not, I do plan on doing one last thing in this episode. And it's over at this side of things. So we've got this really nice uh, system where trains from Guard City North 
So mining pool falls can convey lots of different things. They have tanks, therefore they can carry milk. I uh, don't know why I'm following that line. I should be following this line. Because over here, here, we have a dairy, which converts milk into food. Which actually has food waiting, which is interesting. Um, so I'm going to have to do some redoing here with the waypoints, but we are in a position now. Let me just check that there are no trains that use that good, so I can get rid of you. Um, and I'm assuming it's the same for this. Yep. So I can get rid of you. Where are you there? Good. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of you. I think that's all of them. Yeah, looks like it's all of them. Okay. And I'm actually going to turn this around. So trains will enter it from this side, go around, and then exit in the other direction. Now, I don't think I've got anything that can carry milk and food. But I've been wrong in the past. Let me check. Milk. If I just go by that. Uh, actually, if I go by maximum speed, there we go. So you can carry, you can carry milk and you can carry food. Can you be refitted? Because that'd be perfect. If if you could be. Uh, power again. I think we're going to go with this again. And let's just do that for fun. Can you be refitted? No. So that one doesn't work. Uh, let's go milk. Max speed. I think we had um, yeah these container carriers which can carry milk and can carry food. So there you go. Which means we can make that work. Uh, let me just double check that actually. Refit. Yeah. Fixed cargo. Food or milk. Perfect. So we're going to do that. But before we can do that, we need to reconfigure this station. So we're going to use these two platforms here. Because they're slightly further away, which means we've got more room to, um, to jig things around. So we're going to do all of this rubbish. We're going to get rid of these crossovers. We're going to rebuild them but the other way around. Let me use the auto tool for this because it's quicker. So you're going to go like that. We're going to leave the um, the lorries doing their thing because they are quite handy to have. Um, just thinking this is going to come across like this and then I suppose you're going to come across I mean this is going to be really janky I'm trying to fill this in but we kind of done it like that and then on this side we we'll get rid of all this stuff we don't need the uh, the depot here or anything like that anymore uh, just check that the trains are gone yep good so I can just do this and I can do that and then that and that nicely done get rid of that get rid of this bit get the auto tool out again for this because why not do all of that do this okay so you're gonna come out to somewhere like that um, I'm gonna move these signals so we'll get rid of them we also don't need those ones anymore you're going to go like this, you're going to go like that, and you're going to go like that. Okay, good. And then on this side, you're going to go there, and you're going to go there. Um, let's say we built that like that, and then here maybe? Had it curve round. Like so. Do this. You're going to be path signals like that. Uh, you're also going to be a path signal there. You're going to be a path signal like that. You're going to be a path signal like that. And then um, but we don't need to do it the way I was going to do it. The only thing I don't like, actually we don't need that crossover there do we? The only thing I don't like is it's not going 
around the way it should be. So I am going to change this again. And I apologise profusely for this, but there you go. So that's going to go like that. That's going to go there. And then uh, here, get rid of those. Your processed products because your food. So we're going to do that, which does make them eight. Um, so we could eventually, in, in potentially in the future, have it run as eight. I mean, if we've got that safeguarding, then that's fine. And then I will put a waypoint there. Slow trains down. Okay. Nice. Now, what was it that can hold it again? Um, let's come back over here. Now, I've got some capacity here. So I've got some room to run. And that's actually one of the things I was going to say very quickly was uh, capacity. Capacity, capacity, capacity. It's all very important. We've got lots of capacity, particularly between Guard City and Morningpool Falls. There are four different routes that we could take. There's the uh, Western Reaches line, which is for the express food trains, which we are going to be running. I'm going to set that up off camera. We've then got the route via the West Wind line, so up north here. We then got the route via the Great, Great Western line, which is down the south and through Munfingford. We can also go via the Great Western line um, through uh, Woolworth and off that way. So that's another additional option. How far down is the train? I'm getting distracted. There it is. Power hall. In fact, I might skip over the power hall and choose something like a Deltic. Actually, that's a passenger only, isn't it? Maybe something like that instead. Um, and then we have also got an option to go via... Uh, so follow the Great Western as if we're going to Munfingford. But when we get to Sannington continue straight on and go up through Fort Flonwood and up that way to God City South. That's also an option. So there are lots and lots of options that we have now to run passengers, uh, not passengers, you can tell I'm, I'm getting tired, um, to run freight between the, uh, the, the, the all the different places. So that's quite cool. Um, I've also just realized if I do start on that, get rid of all of those, stop, I want this livery to be different uh, and I think I've messed this up if I do that as Colos like so and then change that again to be livestock then I hope I haven't messed that up I hope and then here um, we do have Colos as an option cool do I need two for this we'll, we'll calculate it. How about that? Uh, so if I go milk and maximum speed and we were going to use not that one, not that one, this one. And it's going to be a six long train. It should be fine because there aren't many hills on this route actually. It's relatively flat. It's a little bit windy so we have got that to contend with but it should be okay. Uh, I'm also looking, I think if we come out the south here and then come through Morningpool Falls here and then uh, here and then in here around the loop like this into the here and then back out this way through Morning Pool Falls again and then via the waypoint there like that and then apart from um, at I don't know I was about to say apart from at Guntwood but that's north of here isn't it so it is a straight run all the way through until we hit this waypoint here in fact we're going to go here and then we're going to hit this waypoint here and then we're going to come into here and then we're going to come out to here and then back whence we came which is here how long have I been recording for? an hour oh my god I keep trying to make these episodes short and they end up being really long pretty much sums up my um, my channel really uh, and yeah at this point actually here I'm going to be a little bit 
mischievous and go up this way so that we unload faster and then we go round the loop which I forgot to do at the start which is bad you've always got to remember to go via the loop waypoint otherwise the train might get confused there we go and then when we come back um, here so we stop then we go via this one and then we go up via this one and then we come out uh, of here through Morning Pool Falls again um, straight on straight on here I think we'll go into the North Depot like that to your service you are unload no loading uh, you are non-stop via you are non-stop via you are non-stop via you are refit to available cargo you are non-stop via you are non-stop via and then you are refit to available cargo I could just set it but there might be some other stuff in the future that we want to transport because this stuff can um, this train can carry um, manufacturing supplies as well so we could have it carry milk and manufacturing supplies to here and then carry food and if we have something else delivered here so we have a dock here and we have some more um, stuff delivered like fish maybe I believe these cars can carry fish as well so it'll carry them back to the freight terminal and that's what I mean by profitable in both directions so we've actually got this train that is making a profit no matter which way it's going which is good it's about time that these freight trains start paying their way actually there is an option to load by cargo type maybe I should use that in future as well right I could tell you now without even doing the algorithm we only need um, five trains maximum for this I would say because I, I can't see us having too many um, trains running on this little short distance that we've got here. Right, set this up. You are 30. This is, I believe, the last thing we're doing in today's episode. I'll check. Uh, oh no, there is one more thing. But I will tell you that I'm going to do it and then I'll just do it off camera. There's loads of conversation topics that I had bookmarked for today as well, but I'm going to have to do them um, next time, I think. I get so busy in these episodes, I just end up forgetting to talk about what I want to talk about and just talk about what I'm doing on, on screen, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Hopefully you guys don't mind me doing that. There's always one person that will hate it. But there you go. Welcome to YouTube, That's what I say to that. Right, 30 in. Now, once we hit here, it's a thousand here obviously oops not one thousand there we go and then it's gonna be 20 coming out because it's really windy and horrible um, and then it's gonna be 75 to here and then it's gonna drop to 45 through mining pool falls as we know um, and then this one is gonna be 30 and then this one is gonna be 30 this is a thousand which means this isn't 30 it's 20 this one here is 20 this one here is 30 45 45 uh, 20 and 20 with this here being 500 autofill um, 2, 3, 4, 5 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 just check uh, all this needs to be 5 as well 2, 3, 4, 5 just check that I've put the times for the depot yep because I forgot to do it with the other ones uh, the 
EMUs actually, the fast EMUs, I forgot to set them to um, go via the stations as well. So they were stopping all the stations that I'd set up as waypoints and it was really awkward. But yeah, those um, cargo EMUs that we've got, a lot of them should be back at depot now. Uh, not that one, this one. Yeah, so they're pretty much all back at depot. I'm going to refit them to carry food so that they'll pick up food from here because there should be some food. Yes, there is. And then it will go up the Western Reaches line to Sunnington. All the way up here. And then from here, it will come all the way back down to Moningpool Falls. And then from Moningpool Falls... Uh, actually, I might have three services do this. I might have one that comes from here, goes up to Sunnington, comes back. And then one from here that goes to Guard City North and back. Possibly. And then one that goes from here to Sanley, which is right the way down in the southwest corner, and back. I think I might do that. But I haven't decided yet, so I'm going to leave those trains in the depot until I decide. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a waste. But that does it for this episode, guys. Uh, it's been a long one. I do apologise for that been a bit wordy as well there's been some calculations involved and all kinds of complicated stuff so um massive apologies if i've uh, if i've confused people i've confused myself that's how i know that i might have confused others i have confused myself so uh, i do apologize for that i'm just going to do this as well because it looks quite nice if you actually um set this up properly there we go i feel like the uh, the three gorges dam in china has a waterway as well as uh boat locks anyway that's totally not relevant Thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you haven't already subscribed... No? No, no, no. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And, of course, if you're enjoying the series, drop some comments down below uh, with ideas for future episodes. I jumped way ahead of myself there, and also two years back in time. It's not very good. Um, besides that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.